There is a rare breed of show that exists. I would almost go so far as to say that this particular breed is endangered because of how few of them we see coming out every year. It's a kind of series that only appears once in a great while. Its entrance may be subtle, but its overall performance becomes anything but. It's the kind of show that I long for, one that I always hope will appear like magic and dazzle us, even if its time before us is fleeting and we must once again suffer the long wait for another series like it. Today, I am going to be talking about a series that at this point is a year old and it took me this long to get to it because as I mentioned, the time between shows like this is long and I have always preferred to survive as long as I can before once again beginning that slog. So I've held off on this one for a while, but I've known that I would be getting to it eventually. So. Now is as good a time as any. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcada, and welcome to Glass Reflection. Today we are looking at the visually stunning 2015 series from A1 Pictures, Your Lie in April. Let's jam. Once upon a time, there was a pianist, a child pianist by the name of Kosei Arima. Considered a prodigy by some and an emotionless robot by others, he was taught by his sickly and abusive mother to play the piano and to always play it as written, with no passion, no emotion. And so he played. He played and played thinking that it would make her happy and thereby get better. Until we reach the tragic part of his backstory, when she died. The death of his mother drove our prodigy Kosei into a traumatic shell that he could not break out of, and he more or less abandoned the piano and music for good. Until one faithful day when he is introduced to a girl by his friend Tsubaki, and that girl is Kaiori Miyazono, a beautiful violinist who performs music with a fiery passion, but also with the grace of an angel. Despite showing a romantic interest in his best friend, Kaiori takes a particular liking to Kosei, lovingly referring to him as Friend A as almost a continual reminder of their relationship status. But it's with her insistent and constant prodding that breaks Kosei out of his shell and helps him try to recover from his childhood trauma and once again play the piano in a way that could move mountains. The drama that this series is known for is this loving combination of humor, conflict, and of course, heaping amounts of tragedy as the story about these few years of the characters' middle school lives are told. The drama is the highlight, as the series has this way of keeping you on the edge of your seat, at least when it doesn't have you curled up in the fetal position, sobbing uncontrollably. We get to see a wonderful depiction of not just music and musical performances, but just life in general as we watch this clash between the, the socially awkward boy and the much more brash and carefree girl showing us ranges in their personalities both on and off the stage. And this constant drama and decent pacing keeps us interested throughout the show. The romance of the series though is generally not my cup of tea, and the key romance plot is a love triangle between Kosei and the two female leads, Tsubaki and Kayori. While there are many people who can get enjoyment out of watching a developing love triangle, historically it has always been something that's depressed me personally as I rarely see it end well. Even in the best of cases, I always feel like a love triangle will inevitably end in sadness for at least one character, if not more. The traditional romantic relationship, you see, only involves two people. So at the end of the day, it's like, it's like the series is playing a game of musical chairs and there's only two chairs left. The music keeps playing and playing and as it does, you start to think about the possibilities of what will happen if these two or those two 
are the ones left at the end. And then you start to make a mental note of which you would prefer. But every time that you think that the music is about to stop, and then you'll know who's in those chairs, music picks up again with another verse. So by the time the music finally does end, and the characters are seated, you are left wondering if this was actually what you wanted. And speaking of the music, despite that being what this series is all about, I never really felt like I really learned anything about music while watching the show. The series doesn't show us how music is played. Rather, it prefers to just play us the music without giving us any details of how it's being performed or how that performance was properly conceived. Looking at Kosei's performances as an example, yes, we may see him practice on a song for hours on end day after day, but we don't see the development or his mental process on how he learns to play the music any differently or better over time. Early on, we see a competition where everyone there is required to play the same piece, but the show never tries to give reasoning or explanation on how a performer can stand out both from their fellow competitors and also from what's written on the page. So if you are not extremely musically inclined and aren't gifted enough to be able to tell the difference by just listening to the music, then you have to take the show's word for it when those other characters created specifically for this purpose explain to you how good a piece is and also how the characters are playing them. As such, those aspects of the show are told through dialogue laid on top of the show's score, leading to some of the major characterization of our performers being told more than shown. To me, the show almost feels like it's suffering from the same problems that Kosei as a character was suffering. It's telling this drama in an almost textbook manner, not that there is a textbook for such things. So much of it feels like it's just there for the sake of it, and it feels like it's missing that particular something to make the story truly stand out. If this were a performance, I would say that, as Kosei initially did, the drama played out only what was on the page. I didn't feel like there was enough to make it differentiate itself from other well-told dramas. Like those performances, though, most people might not pick up on all of this, and in fact, it might even be better for the sake of your own enjoyment of the series to not even try to notice these things. It's actually quite easy to get into the mood of enjoying the show, because even if at times it feels like it's been constructed rather than organically grown, I have to admit that it was done so wonderfully in many ways. How the series goes over the feelings of loss and depression, how it can affect people and mentally change their perspective is brilliant. And then, when the show is not trying to portray these dark and suffocating atmospheres, it's able to display this sense of splendor in not just its music, but also in the everyday lives of its characters. The visuals of the show help this greatly. Your Lie in April is an example of just how spectacular animation can be at times. Watching it is an absolute visual pleasure. It has this kind of eclectic style that grabs your attention and holds it there. The colors have such a wide palette that can range from beautiful, bright ones to sorrowful dark tones when the need arises. There is this careful attention to detail, from the attire to how the characters hold themselves when under stress, to the fact that these characters actually have proper lips, which is admittedly a weird thing to bring up. And also, of course, the other very plot-specific details that become more relevant as the series progresses. Sure, the show also has this much less detailed art style that it switches to for comedy purposes, but while it can occasionally be jarring, it and the vast majority of problems, even with the story, get swept away under this whirlwind of color, this frantic and wild torrent of emotion, this runaway train of passion and sorrow that just captures you for but a brief moment before letting you go almost as swiftly as it arrived. It just leaves you reeling from what you just experienced. The performances of the classical musical pieces are brilliant. Even if you don't understand any of their significances, the series is still able to make you care about them enough to get you caught up in the aforementioned typhoon feelings. If I was to criticize the music, there is very little that I can actually touch on. I'm not a music major or anything, and most of the time I can place myself squarely in the position of not knowing much about music 
and musical performances. At least not beyond the very basic high school level and definitely nothing competitive. That said, however, in terms of original music for the show, I was actually hoping for a little bit more. The classical score was amazing and performed as such, but when I look back and try to think about what original tracks really stuck out to me, I can only think of a scant number. This is a problem not with the, the show really, but with my own expectations I suppose, as previously most of the romance dramas that I have watched have always had this one track, this one song that when played on its own, outside of the context of the show, makes me recall all of the emotions from my original watching of the series instantly. Your Lie in April didn't really have one of those for me. There is this one piano track that will be remembered in my head as a really great and standout track from the series, but over the course of the show I felt that it was played far too often to be able to bring up any specific emotions, and there was no singular moment that it was used that had enough emotion behind it to make that moment stand out against the others. The show preferred to space out its emotion rather than let it well up for that kind of thing, which of course is perfectly fine. It's just my own expectations that brought about disappointment. What I wasn't disappointed in, however, was the dub. I have a particular habit of mine when watching a show for the first time to help me decide whether or not I want to watch the series subbed or dubbed when I have both options available to me. Usually I will watch the first episode dubbed and then I will watch the second episode subbed. And I do it in this order because if I happen to hit a dub that doesn't really seem to fit very well with the series, I can just quickly swap over to the sub without too much trouble. With this series though, it wasn't until about episode 10 or 11 that I remembered, oh right, I haven't watched an episode subbed yet, because I was just enjoying this dub so much. Now that said, from that point on, I completed the series in sub, because I did want to see the ending of the show in the same way that many others have when they watched the show while it was airing. But when I did that switch from dub to sub, it really surprised me just how similar the English voices were to the Japanese seiyuu. It's more than just another dub or just something slapped on to help the series sell to a wider English audience. And I could tell that there was this immense level of passion on the side of the English ADR team. The actors were well casted and the director had them perform so well, it was just great. It probably won't be anywhere near enough to convince dub haters or sub purists to convert, but if you, like me, do enjoy a well-produced dub, this is certainly one of them. Lastly, I would just like to quickly mention that the show's first opening, a song titled Hikaru Nara by Goosehouse, is amazing. In fact, Goosehouse in general is also amazing, and you should check them out if you've never heard of them before. But I was just really disappointed when I couldn't hear this opening anymore after the first half of the show because I just enjoyed it so much. Like, the second opening is also really good, but I just got uh, really attached to the Goosehouse track. Anyway, Your Lie in April is a fabulous show. The story about this musician and those who are affected by him overcoming all of their own kinds of grief and hardships is astounding to watch. It's not a flawless masterpiece by any means, and I would have loved to see more out of the supporting characters, for example. At least more than what we got. And maybe, perhaps, it would have been much better if it was a full 26 episodes instead of just, you know, 22, but hey, like the music that the characters perform, there are ups and downs, and not everything will be exactly to your taste. But if you enjoy the kind of show that this is, I guarantee that you will find this worth your while. Even if the story and the characters don't end up grabbing you as much as they have grabbed others, the spectacle of the whole thing, from the music to the brilliant animation, is worth the price of admission. As such, I gladly present Your Lie in April with the recommendation to buy it. As with most shows that go beyond simply watching it, this series is at times like a piece of art. And should you have the ability to, you should proudly display it on your shelf, like I'm going to. While it is an Aniplex release here in North America, and they can be expensive for those who can afford to, the Blu-ray release of this series is worth having, as it makes the experience all the greater. That said, however, the series is also available for streaming in multiple locations, such as Crunchyroll, if you don't mind the sub anyway, and also Netflix, if you are looking for the dub. Netflix has the sub 
as well, of course, but I'm just, you know, presenting you with options. For alternate anime recommendations, I cannot let you walk away without mentioning a series called No Dame Canta Bene. It's a similar musical series with a much more lighthearted feel to it. It's a whimsical series about a rather gruff and stiff musician who comes into contact with a much more bubbly and carefree pianist, and together their relationship is one worth experiencing if you have yet to. Second recommendation for those not as musically inclined goes to Anohana. This one is a drama about a group of characters who, like Kosei, need to confront their pasts and face the sometimes depressing reality before them. If you are looking for another series that'll make you cry your eyes out, this'll be it. And hopefully, between those two, you should find something to your liking. And that's it for me. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter if you feel so inclined. And hey, if you like what I do here and feel like helping out, please consider going and checking out my Patreon page. And if you feel it within your heart, also consider donating. Very special thanks to Halo Millennium, Grace Anderson, Lulika Adachi, Joshua Garcia, Victor Ekmark, Calhoun Boy, Nikolai Gray, and Mark Robichad for donating already. You guys are awesome. And until next time, stay frosty.